Welcome back to another gorgeous day in the UK. We're just not used to this nice weather we're having at the moment. Today I'm going to be going on a little bit of an explore, bit of exploration. And to do my exploration, I'm on the Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Explorer. Now this is the full top of the line rally version of the Tiger 1200. 30 litre fuel tank, full electronic suspension, styly calipers, blind spot detection, 21 inch front wheel, tubeless tyres. It is a serious bit of kit this. This is perhaps the biggest motorcycle I've ever ridden outside of like a gold wing or something. I'm six foot two, I can't even flat foot this bike. This is a humongous motorcycle, 260 kilos worth of motorcycle sat here with off-road tyres and a 20 inch front wheel. So I'm going to take it on a little bit of exploration. It's the Triumph Tiger Explorer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go on these little sort of back lanes, see where we get to, maybe hit the odd sort of gravel lane and stuff as well, and use this bike as it was intended. So uh, if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of something cold to drink, because things could get steamy on this one. Job Z, roll the intro. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to be riding this bike for it, what it's intended, really. I mean, I don't think you get a bike with a 30-litre tank, off-road tyres, big 21-inch front wheel, unless you're planning on sort of using, using those abilities. And uh, we're going to test these as best we can. I'm no off-road expert. This is a 260-kilo motorcycle. I'm not going to be doing any serious off-road on this machine. I do not want to hurt myself. So we're going to be just sticking to some, you know, a bit of gravel lane maybe, a bit of that. So this bike is really aimed directly at the BMW R1250 GSA, of course, with a 30 litre tank. You know, I, I've done a comparison of this bike, not, not the rally version, but the GT Pro version, compared to the BMW, compared to the Multistrada, and compared to the uh, KTM Super Adventure. I'll put a link to that video at the top. I did that with the 44 Teeth Boys. See, this, I think, is the sort of terrain this bike is designed for, you know? Gravel, stones, potholes. That's why that 21-inch front wheel works. But this bike isn't just... This bike isn't just about doing these sorts of lanes and going off-road. I've been riding this bike for the last probably week and a half, you know, and the thing which stands out about this machine, firstly, is the comfort. It is so comfortable, really well padded seat, just really easy to ride. You know, quick shifter blipper, it's like butter. It's just super smooth, smooth, super easy to live with. Apart from the size, it's a big bike. So apart from the size, that is, so bear that in mind. But it's just really easy. And the other thing which has really impressed not only is it big and comfortable and easy to ride, it's really capable as well. The noise from that engine, that induction roar, when I mean, it sounds incredibly sporty, doesn't it? It's got a beautiful sound, this thing. I think the motor is obviously based around the same 1200 lump which is in the Speed Triple. The Speed Triple RS and the Speed Triple RR. It's obviously a little bit different. This obviously is a cross-plane engine. This is why it does make that slight different sound to the uh, the speed. And obviously the power's down on the speed. This is tuned a bit more for torque and you know, low down power delivery. But it's a brilliant engine, this new 1160cc triple. It's a beautiful engine. Let's ignore the sat nav and let's go left. Woo! <laughs> it's surprisingly quick. Wee! Styling my calipers there when you need them. Oh, 
front wheels dancing off the ground. This bike is absolutely laden with technology. You've got the blind spot detection here on the bottom of the mirrors. You've got a little sensor on the back of the bike. I'll say little, it's actually quite a large sensor on the back of the bike. But that gives you your blind spot detection, which works really well. Full adjustable electronic suspension based on your mode. And you can also go in and manually, I say manually, electronically adjust it, but choose to harden or soften you know, within the mode itself. Obviously traction control, off-road mode, sport mode. This is just in the road mode at the moment. But you know, there's loads of tech on this machine. You know, lean sensitive, ABS, you know, all of that stuff. Guys, it's, it's tall when I come to put the feet down. There's a little left ear. I'm gonna check this out. I've been down here before, but I know this, <laughs> hey! Yeah, so we've gotta be careful of these sorts of lanes. The gear change on this with the quick shift and everything is so much smoother than the uh, GS. So smooth, so smooth on this bike. And I guess that is the one of the few niggles with the GS, isn't it? Is that quick shifter blipper and that gear change is quite slow and mechanical on the boxer engine. But it's but like butter on this. Here we go, a bit of gravel here, a little bit. Ooh, hey, traction control kicked in there. When these roads get much worse, we might have to stand up. Oh, the traction control's going mad. It might be time to drop it into off-road mode, actually. Look at this. I think we go up here. It's all that over there. I think that's like pheasant breeding. It's probably too far away for you to see on the GoPro. I think that's like breeding the pheasant. There's a shoot around here. Pheasant hunting. And I think they breed them all in there, and then they, they release them into the enclosures, and people take pot shots at them. Okay, what I'm gonna do, as we've got a bit of gravel here, I'm gonna take it into the off-road mode. You've gotta be stopped, I think, to get it into the off-road mode. There we go, off-road. And I think that'll then adjust, just like it's adjusted the suspension, it's gone saggier. Look, it's flashing suspension up there. OCA, so that's ABS disabled. Probably on the rear, I think. This is, is an off-road pro mode as well. This isn't the off-road pro. This is just the off-road. So let's see how the how the traction control now works. Oh, the suspension's definitely softened right up, it has. 220 mil of travel, front and rear, and it's definitely softened right off. Oh yeah, it definitely spins up a bit more. You know what, it may be time to stand up. It may be time to stand up. The throttle response is also completely different in the off-road mode. It's softened right off. Yeah, it's nice to stand up on as well. It's quite thin between your legs. So it's quite a nice sort of feel to it. When you're stood up, I have to say, I'm actually going to be going to Spain. One of the reasons I've got this bike is I'm going to the Triumph Off-Road Experience Centre in Spain. At the end of the month, me and Womble are going, I'm taking Womble, I'm going to go back and do that again, I enjoyed that. I'm taking Womble with me and we're both going to go and do the off-road experience in Spain. Well, they're going to teach us how to handle you know, these bit. hopefully not the big, not the rally version, but the non-rally off-road. You know Womble's always funny when he goes off-road and he's really nervous, he hasn't done any off-road in ages, as haven't I. I'm, I've completely forgotten how to off-road. And I've mentioned it before, but doing off-road is like... It's like doing wheelies, you've got to keep doing it. If you stop doing it, you lose that feel. It's all about feel off-road. Just like wheelies is all about feel. So uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the Triumph Adventure Experience in Spain, learning how to ride these Tigers properly off-road. So uh, yeah, stick around for that. Woo! I think the rear ABS should be off as well. Let's have a look. Yep. Yeah, we can lock the back. Ah, enjoyed that. This is a public highway. This is the state of our roads in the UK. Look at this. Is this not the worst maintained tarmac road you've ever seen? Absolutely awful. <laughs> this is a terrible bit of road. Absolutely terrible. 
exactly what this boy is designed for. More gravel for the tiger. Yeah. I think I'll stand up again now. Oh yeah, oh, that's a big bump. Yeah, this is what this bike's all about. Oh, we've got a road here. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's a lot of fun. I'll leave it in off-road mode for the time being because we're going to be going on the, the loose stuff again in a minute. Yeah, actually, the, it's like the power is also knocked back a bit when it's in off-road mode it's definitely softened the, the response feels like it's actually less power as well might be restricted to 100 horsepower or something we've got another green lane here i know this one unsuitable for heavy vehicles oh we may we may not be any good on this one there's quite a lot of movement <laughs> i'm not used to this off-road malarkey what I am finding, being 6'2", stood up on this actually, the bars are quite a nice height. I, I could, you know, I could stand right up and the bars are actually a really nice height for me. That is really good. Yeah, still got enough power even in the, the off-road -mo mode to spin the back up. There's a slapping noise, which I think is the... The centre stand, comes with a centre stand as well, hitting the frame as I go over the bumps. Oh yeah, this is good. I look the back. <laughs> that suspension's brilliant for this. This is loose, oh my word. This is really loose. I think I'm going to get a bit of speed to compensate. Oh, don't tuck the front chops. Don't tuck the front. <laughs> yeah, you can notice that weight when when it starts to get really loose. That front starts to dance around. <laughs> this is a big old motorcycle. Oh, duck, duck, duck. Take it a little bit easier, I don't want to come whizzing around here and find some people out for a walk, some walkers. Oh, this, is, this is getting big and gravelly now. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a big bike. It's a big bike for off-roading on. That is, that is quite intimidating. But actually, you know what, it handled that pretty well. Right, let's have a little walk around of it. Oh, get my leg over. Oh, I can barely get my leg over the back. Barely get my leg over anyway. So there she is, the Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Explorer. A massive, massive, massive motorcycle. That's my selfie stick, by the way. It's not got a windscreen wiper. I'll rig that up in a minute. I think it comes with all of these crash bars. Um, big bash plate at the bottom, you know, all of that stuff. The, the, the odd sort of rear swinging arm, look, the sort of cantilever sort of swinging arm. Then on the left side, you've got the shaft, big shaft drive. This thing on the back here, I mean, it's not the most attractive of the uh, back ends, is it? Because of that, that's the radar module, so you can do the blind spot detection. But you know, it's it's. Mm, Rather ugly looking, I have to say that. Rather ugly looking. But it is a big bike. I mean, stood next to it. Size of it. It's almost taller than me. <laughs> and that's with the screen, I think. Oh, that's the screen in the highest position. It does You've got adjustable screen. I do like the big sort of running light on the headlight there. And, the, you know, you can tell it's a, a tiger with a little beak here. And uh, and it's come, even got the fog lights on this one. I don't know if they're standard, whether they're extra. But you know that big, that big front tyre, Stylema calipers, the Shower Gold Forks look. I think look really good, fully tubeless. But this this is a nineteen and a half thousand pound motorcycle, so you know it comes with everything: heated front and rear seats, you know, adjustable here, and then you've also got another power outlet at the back here, 
preload automatic preload for the rear shock that's what that big unit is there to actually adjust the preload on the rear as well as the damping adjustment as well it's also got preload so you know, it's fully kitted everything a serious 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 motorcycle the seat as you can see is in the lowest position that you can have that seat higher what sort of person needs the seat higher than what this is already i'm six foot two and it's too tall for me in the lowest position that's probably just about right for me once you're used to the size of this mammoth one thing i do find on this bike is the uh the dash and everything i find a little bit laggy you know when you when you go into the mode you press the mode button and you select your mode well it's a bit quicker that time maybe because i've just done it but it can be a little bit laggy the dash uh also you know when i rode this bike before i moaned that the you, know, you don't see things like the the range to empty on the dashboard you know this is like a bit more information on that main dashboard and people said no you can go in and you can select I, i've been all through that dashboard i can't find how you put the range to empty on the screen all the time on that main screen without going in you know and, and selecting it like that and everything slightly offset I and mean, you can have it like that fine i suppose that's good enough isn't it but then yeah i suppose that's all right i suppose i can put up with that That's a bit more nimble now. That's a bit quicker in the sport mode. No, oh, I mean, it's the 360. This poor camera has been through hell lately. Oh, there we go. My lance. Things I do to get you the shots. Well, I've got to ride around with that thing looking like a bloody knobhead. Look at it. That's a lance a lot. The Tiger 1200 is an exceptionally good motorcycle. And this is what I said when we did the big comparison, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's a perfect mix of performance, comfort, and ease of use, I guess. You know, it's so easy to ride. Oh, I'm just trying to work out which way I want to go here. I'm going to go right. It's so easy to ride, despite it being a 260 kilo humongous motorcycle it's still easy to ride it's got fantastic performance 150 horsepower you know it outperforms the gs all day long it's not as fast as the multi and the super adventure i mean they're your sporty adventure bikes this one sits in between i'd say the multi strada and the bmw in the performance stakes but it's way more comfortable way more comfortable than the multi strada if i had to go to Europe or spend all day in the saddle this would be my choice I don't think this is really any more uncomfortable than the GS this has been so nice to ride so beautiful to ride the clutch is light the gearbox is fantastic you know and it's shaft drive it's also I think 10 or 20 or 10 kilos at least lighter than the equivalent of BMW so it's more powerful it's lighter but you just know Triumph won't sell as many as these as the BMW does and I think that's really probably down to the looks a little bit and also it's a big motorcycle you know it's a heavy bike 260 kilos and the problem with the Tiger I guess over the GS is the weight is high compared to the GS with that boxer engine where you've got the weight really low down you can definitely feel this is a, a tall I say top heavy but there's definitely a fair amount of weight up quite high on this machine so I think you need to be a bigger guy, you know, a bit of strength to you to contemplate having one of these. Whereas I think the GS, I'm sure the seat's a little bit low on the GS and I'm sure it's easier to manoeuvre around because the weight's lower because of that boxer engine. So that's the consideration. I think apart from that point, I actually think it's a, a nicer bike to ride than the BMW. It's just whether you can live with that slightly top heavy feel to it compared to the gs I and mean, what that does do because the weight's high that obviously makes it turn in fantastically quickly you know drop into the corners because in you know, that weight sort of like a weeble almost you know well, that's all the way around the weight at the bottom so the front doesn't want to move <laughs> opposite to a weeble with the weight at the top 
So it actually makes it tip into the corners really quickly and say it's a really agile feeling motorcycle. So if you want to know a little bit more about this bike and if you want to see this bike used off-road properly, as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing the Triumph Adventure Experience in Spain at the end of the month. Me and Womble learning how to ride these big adventure bikes properly off-road. So that'll be really interesting. So if you want to see how we get on with the big tigers off-road, please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.